Mr. Hopkins. Hey, man. So how old are you? Sir, are you? I'm 39. Okay. Jesus, I didn't realize everybody was going to be, you know, did you guys all get married or born in the same hospital or something? You know, it's like you guys are like in, in the cribs, in the cribs, right? I didn't even realize this. Um, <laughs> okay. So what services are we currently offering right now? So we do uh, tax planning, uh, tax compliance, uh, tax res, um, and a little bit of bookkeeping and accounting plus uh, consulting. So full consulting. service. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. And so when you first joined, and I remember, you know, Charles, you and I have a long history, right? So Charles has been with us in some form or fashion since 2016. Um, and I think some of you guys mm -hmm. on here even met Charles at an event that we did back then. But you were only at 3300 bucks a month. Right. So right. what made you decide uh, to join up with us back then? Uh, actually, uh, I, I put this whole thing on there because uh, back then, uh, so I started my business January 2016. And, um, you know, this, that little hump right there is kind of like that was tax season. And then you see that like lull right there, like June, July. Yeah, because what was the month you joined? Uh, uh, so I ended up joining uh, October, uh, actually late September, uh, late September, uh, early October. October was the first, uh, I think it was October. So what ended up happening is um, that summer period, first tax season was going, you know, I thought great. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm. I'm making it, you know, first year out of corporate America, and I thought life was great. And uh, next thing you know, that summer was kind of dry, and I was just like, oh. And, you know, I actually have a, a wife, and at that time, I think I had two children. And so it was, um, I started, like, really saying, okay, well, what do I need to do? Do I need to go back to work? And uh, I'm a person of faith, so I was like, you know, I kind of, like, prayed about it. I was like, what should I do? And uh, next thing you know, I um, I started actually applying for jobs and everything, but I asked for time. I remember I started, that. I started applying. Yeah. So I applied for jobs and uh, I was about to start. Uh, I got an interview with the state and I was like, okay, well, I was signed with the state and uh, I heard they don't have to do a lot of work there anyway. And then I'll also like study <laughs> for my CPA in the meanwhile, then I'll try again to do my own business later. Um, next thing you know, I started... Um, uh, I asked for that sign. I went in, got the interview. I mean, did the interview. They liked me. I was going to come back for the second interview. 30 minutes after I walked out of there, the lady called me back and was like, I'm so sorry. The state pulled out. They're not going to hire any accountants now. And I was like, oh, I was like, all right, well, that's exactly what, what I needed to hear. I guess that's my sign. So then I'm on Facebook that day. And then I see your, uh, I see one of your ads argue. And um, I was like, this guy knows exactly how to help me because he hit all my pain points. And uh, I signed up, and that was uh, that was actually October 2018. That's where you see that big spike because I immediately, like, my first week I jumped straight to week three to learn the script, and I just started using that on my uh, on my new people coming in. And um, it was uh, that first within I think two weeks of being in the program, I was able to earn an additional 6,500 a month, and that kind of like uh, let me know how this thing was real. I love it. Now, real quick, what happened here in this? Because this is another one of those examples of like, sometimes you've been doing pretty good. And then you go down here in November 2018, all the way back to where you've been mm -hmm. almost in that September, October 2017. You had a low right before a spike all the way up to almost 100K a month. What, what, what happened here? Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up like dealing with personnel issues. And I think uh, one of the biggest challenges, uh, similar to Jeff, is like my team, I was doing most of the heavy lifting. And if I wasn't doing it, then it would, you know, it wasn't going to happen. So I started, and, and I think I got a little bit lax as well at a certain point. Like before you know it, I wasn't intentional anymore. And, um, you know, I, I had to refocus. I had to, I had to change things up big time. Were there any services that you changed offering here? Uh, let's see, November, 2018, uh, no, I hadn't done tax planning or at, at that time yet. I just really, when did you uh, first start I doing tax planning? When did you sell your first tax plan? Cause I thought, uh, didn't you join up seven plan. figure firms? When was that again? Actually, you know what? That is December that, so I, so I rejoined, uh, seven figure firms, I think December, 2018. Yeah, yeah. It, it was December, 2018. Nice. Okay. And so, yeah. And, yeah. and so, so what that's changed how at that got, point? Um, so I had 10 days to the end of the year and you're like, man, you just got to go crazy. Call your biggest clients now. 
and offer tax planning. And I did that. And um, within my two, I got two of my clients that ended up being like a 30K in tax planning just, just right there. So I think that was the biggest, biggest lift. Love it. And I guess when we look at this now, between now and the time you wrap this thing up, let's say 70, how big do you want the business to get? Uh, I, I'd probably say, uh, you know, it would be nice if it got to, uh, I say about 12 million a year. I, at first I was going to say 10 million, but just said a million a month. So I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Maybe a million a month. looks so good. Yeah. So, and also another thing too, is what was it like? I mean, when you look at this, this I'm guessing was COVID. Yes, that's correct. That's cool. So what, what was that like to see that kind of a number? It was really nice, uh, and it actually told me a lot about what we could do as a, as a team and as a company, and um, honestly, I felt like it was my duty to get out there and get this in front of as many people as possible. Uh, that also pricked something in my heart to say, you know, why don't I feel like that with tax planning? Because you genuinely are saving people literally thousands every year, so I should make that my duty as well, and I, I, I just... I can't imagine what my sales would look like after that. I think a lot of people had that epiphany too. Like there's a lot of people I know um, uh, that basically coming into this, <laughs> Judy DeFeo, who where they were like, uh, you know, I want to do advisory work. And then this thing kind of forced them into seeing the power of that in a way that, you know, you didn't normally see it. Um, and I think 100% we can take that back. What do you estimate you're going to do in salary and net profit this year? I know it's hard to say because obviously this is so chaotic, but if you had to guess. If I had to guess, um, you know, I'd say in between 450 and, and, and maybe, maybe in between 450 and 600, I'd say. Love it. And what is the number one problem in the business today? Number one problem is um, I realized I had a lot, lack of processes and um, I, I didn't have a consistent, I didn't have consistency because I, when you look at things, I, I think McDonald's, stays consistent. I mean, like you, people go to McDonald's even when they're in another country because they know they'll get the same, you know, what a, a Big Mac is going to taste like a Big Mac or a cheeseburger is going to taste like a cheeseburger. And with my firm, depending on which consultant they went with, uh, <laughs> our clients were getting a different experience. And uh, so I realized that was a huge problem and also a huge opportunity. So I've been focusing on that right now. Love it. And now, Charles, back in the day, I remember now we had like a small mastermind group back in the day and we had an event. I think it was in the Cayman Islands. Right. And I remember back in the day, you know, Charles was so uh, much smaller, obviously, than he is right now, 142,000 a month. He, he signed up and we all went down to the Cayman Islands and I was like, damn, where's Charles? Charles didn't show up and he didn't end up making it down to the Cayman Islands and he didn't end up staying in seven figure firms originally. Right? Or, well, and it wasn't really the same thing as what it is today, but he joined up with us. He didn't end up staying with us for the full year. And you joined, I think, at an event, and then it was like a, a, a year or so, or maybe 18 months later, you ended up coming back. So I guess, why did you come back, and why have you stayed? So uh, what ended up happening, man, and uh, that came in, like, from time to time, they'll throw that came in, they're like, oh, you know, you ghosted on the came in that time. <laughs> And so <laughs> I love this story though, because you know what I love about it is I, I always look at like early on when I started off in business, when you had troubled client relationships, you almost take it personally, uh -huh. right? But then later on, yeah. so many people, as long as you don't take it personally, you end up, it, just things happen, right? I mean, you and I have an amazing yeah. relationship now, like you're going to give a presentation later at this event. And so I think it just, mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with that. Like you'll see it in the group sometimes we're like, oh, this client said this and the other. It's like, you know, go easy on them because it's a bigger picture, right? Absolutely. So at that time, um, I ended up winning clients um, to the learn how to do that value proposition. But then the challenge became, um, you know, you're always you always have to keep those fishing poles in the water and uh, and continually, um, you know, try to onboard new clients because uh, those clients that I onboarded, they were taking all my time. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to focus on this. But then next thing you know, I had to uh, like they started having issues paying me. Uh, and one of the clients was a five thousand month client. And so it just became chasing and, and he tried to almost turn me into an employee in a sense. Well, next thing you know, um, getting caught up in that, like my money, my revenue just started going down. So the Caymans came up and I, honestly, I just couldn't afford it, but I was too embarrassed to kind of like say that at the time. And, um, and honestly, and it, cause I remember he's like, well, what happened, man? And I was like, you know, I was like a little bit elusive, but then I was like, you know, I, I ultimately couldn't afford it. And, and I ultimately had to drop out of the program 
because uh, I couldn't afford the installments either at that time. <clears throat> had to totally recalibrate, kind of like start back from scratch once that uh, big client, um, like once I got out of the clutches of that, I was able to refocus and kind of like- Yeah, it was, a, I think you, know, you had a big client that was like five, six grand a month, right? That was just sucking up so much yeah. of your attention wouldn't allow you to grow the business. Exactly, it was five grand a month at that time. And I felt like, I, I mean, I was literally even driving to the, his office at uh, like two or three times a week. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was a good situation. And, and what um, made you decide to rejoin up with us later? Yeah. You know, honestly, I see your ads on Facebook and um, I always wonder, I'm like, I, I wonder what it would have been if I would have stayed. I wonder how things are going. And so I, uh, I just clicked on one of your ads again. And uh, it's funny. So I signed up. I signed up just to listen to the seminar, uh, just to see how, how things are doing now. And I was like, oh, because that's when I first heard of tax planning. And that was uh, December 2018. And I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty good, actually. And so sure enough, uh, I called up just to kind of see what it looks like to work with you again. And then they're like, well, actually, hey, Andrew wants to talk to you. I was like, oh, shoot. And so <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I was like, all right, let me talk to him. And then before you know it, I was just like, it just made sense. And um, it just made sense. I love it, man. Point. Well, congratulations on everything. I mean, it really is just the beginning. And um, yeah, Telma says, I remember the very first event, Charles. What a great story. Love it. Um, Elias says, Charles, what services are you offering that has generated a large amount of revenue for the firm? I'd say services generating the largest amount of revenue. Uh, I'd say tax planning. Um, the biggest portion that actually at one of our seven figure events, I was talking to uh, other firm owners and they were telling me that uh, they also charge for a retroactive S Corp conversion. And we weren't charging for that. We were only just charging for the tax returns. And so that actually helped me out uh, big time because uh, being able to one charge for that conversion fee. And then two, uh, like Jeff was saying, get more in front of the tax planning before we even start uh, start the taxes in most cases. Love it. And let me see here. Okay, yes, it's your duty to help team members. Uh, Jessica says, I can relate to everything you are saying, Charles. I'm back for round two. You know, the reason I went through that too is that, you know, if you look at Jeff here, you go back. Jeff quit his job and it didn't work out. Then he came back and built his firm again. Now it's done this. Charles started up with us. And then he left, came back and did this. So I guess it's like, it's good to see the ugliness and stories, right? Sometimes you see people that are successful and you just think like, oh, well, obviously it was just like, you're just a genius. I'm an idiot, right? Well, I mean, we all kind of make stupid mistakes and they all have sort of rocky, bumpy roads. Um, so I would say, Charles, how did you combat the challenge of consistent client experience with your staff? This one's from Boris. Oh, got it. So I uh, read this book by Keith Cunningham and um, it's called The Road Less Stupid. And um, that combined with a book called The E-Myth. Um, the E-Myth talks a lot about processes and how a company like McDonald's, billion dollar corporation, is able to run that corporation basically on 16 year olds and 18 year olds uh, because their process is like, hey, when you, the way you cook the fries is like this. The way you put the burgers is like that. Like each one is so specific. So, um, so and that's also, that's still a challenge that I'm in the middle of solving but I'm a lot further than I have been because of uh, the road less stupid Keith Cunningham, really awesome book, um, and, and the e-myth. I love it, Charles. Thanks for coming on, man. Great story, and congratulations on everything. 